In this lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to carve this little Christmas angel. And um, this is in mahogany. Now I cut this out on a bandsaw. You could car cut it out on a scroll saw if you want. Also, there's a little pierced area here, which a bandsaw obviously couldn't get into. So what I did, did was drill a hole and then insert a scroll saw blade and cut out that little interior area. Uh, if you didn't have a scroll saw, what you could do is just drill a few holes in that area, you know, with a pretty large drill that fills up the area. And then you could just go with a chisel and do the final cleanup. And this is 3 8 of an inch thick mahogany. And so what I have here, I'm going to be attaching this to a backer board with double-sided tape. And you could use woodworker's tape, um, you can use carpet tape if it's not, um, you kind of want to test it really to see how it releases. But I also use what's called golf grip tape. And it's what uh, golfers use to wrap around their handles of the golf clubs. And it works really well. I think it's probably the same material <clears throat> as uh, woodworkers tape. But I'm just trying to put this double-sided tape around as many areas as possible, especially the real fragile areas, like the, um, the horn. And the wings. All right, I wanna make sure I'm not overlapping because if it overlaps, then it doubles up and it makes that section of the tape a little thicker and it doesn't hold as well. So just trying to lay out. All right, now just get your fingernails in there and remove each one. Now these, uh, this extends a little bit past the carving, so I am gonna be cutting some of it off just with a little, little blade, little knife. And because if you have the tape extending uh, past the carving, it just has this sticky area that likes to hold on to the wood shavings. And it helps to have nails at this point. All right, so I think I got it in enough places. Uh, you know what, that's making me a little nervous, a little tip of the wing. And the reason I'm using this double-sided tape is because it's very easy to release once you're done carving, and it will hold this now. I clamped the backer board, and I can carve and you much have full freedom to carve in all of the areas without having a clamp on my carving. Okay, and you wanna make sure it's a pretty even board, pretty flat board, along with the flat carving. If it's not, it'll kind of rock and it won't really hold very tight. Okay, now I'm just gonna go along with a little, little carving knife and take any excess tape that's just very obviously sticking out. All right, now there's <clears throat> some 
Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. It'll probably stick inside here. Let me see if I can get some of this inside out. It is distracting when the wood chips stick. So, oh, there we go. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. Okay, so I am going to try to not use very many tools on this. Very minimal amount of tools. And I'm gonna show you how to do a lot of this with just the flat chisel. Just outlining the, actually the, this part here will be rounded over. And um, so now what I've done, I'm just holding this with uh, bench dogs. And um, if you don't have this kind of workbench with bench dogs, you can just simply clamp this and it's still out of the way. The clamps are still out of the way of the carving. All right, let me get my pencil. And so what we've got here, we've got arms there, right? The sleeves kind of going over. Uh, the wing is going to be overlapping the body slightly right there. And then the hair there is going to go kind of behind the wing. Okay, so there's a few little division areas here. And then we've got the horn behind the hand and then also behind the mouth or sort of halfway down. And so what I'm just going to start doing right now, let's just take my V chisel and I'm going to go ahead and outline some of these areas, like right here, so that the wing is separated from the head. And then also right here, I'm gonna take and just outline it so that the wing slightly overlaps the back. And then there's another little overlapping where the shoulder is gonna be above, and then there's a little bit of an overlap there. Okay, and then we're right here, where the horn, and then this side of the hand. So I'm basically taking the V chisel on the side of the line that uh, is going to be lowered down. So I'm leaving the line visible, leaving the guidelines so I know what the edges are. And that just, it's kind of like drawing with the V chisel really. And so it just uh, clears, clears things away so that then I can come in here and make a cut like this. This is just a flat chisel. And I'm going to really try to use my flat chisel a lot on this. And then go along here. Now this is a really fragile area. So I'm just gonna very lightly take, kind of rock the tool. If I put any pressure on there, it's just gonna split. All right, and right there. So just to define it, oh, there's another little, edge there where the sleeve, the hand is going to go under the sleeve. Okay. And just a little edge there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to round this over. Now, I quite often use a flat chisel for rounding and it's just coming like that and just taking off corners and then just taking off more and more and more. So start out with about a 45 degree angle cut. And then you can just reposition it to take another section off and then another, another section off here. So just so that you, if you just make enough small cuts like this, you will get a rounded surface. All right, so now the grain is going in this direction, but right here it's doing a little bit of a switching. I can kind of feel it catching right there. So at that point, I'm gonna turn it around and come in this direction. All right, so it really depends on what is happening with the wood that you have, um, where that grain switch is. See, this is a nice sweeping cut, so it's possible that uh, you may not have to change at all, but you just have to go along and kind of feel it. And if you start feeling that it's just starting to catch, just stop, turn it around, and go in the other direction and finish that up.
All right, and then where it goes under the arm there. Now notice I'm doing this whole thing with the bevel side down of this um, flat chisel. You could do it bevel side up, but this is actually allowing me to lift it a little higher off the wood. And the tendency is if you do bevel side down, it's gonna wanna dive into the wood more. And if you do bevel side, sorry, <laughs> Did I say that right? If you do bevel side up, it's gonna to wanna to dive into the wood. But if you do bevel side down, it's going to, um, if anything, it's gonna to wanna to skip off the wood, but that's better than taking too much away. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and do this side too. So this direction up till probably about there, I and mean, I'm gonna to have to go back in the other direction, so. So again, that first, first cut is more like a 45 degree angle. Now this part here is almost going right across the grain. Again, the grain's going like that. So this is a little harder to carve just because you're going right across the grain. And then it gets a little easier as it comes along here. Now you can use any kind of wood. I just picked this mahogany because I actually had a piece that was the perfect um, thickness. You may wanna start with basswood. Very good wood to start out with. Um, but now the difficulty is if you have something very thick, like you know even three quarters of an inch or one inch, there's, it's just so thick with this very delicate carving, uh, you probably would want to have it thinned down. And if you decided to carve it all down to that thickness, that's a lot of wood to remove. So you wanna start out with wood that um, has a, as I said, this is three eighths of an inch. You could probably do it with uh, maybe a quarter inch also. And use the same techniques, just don't, just it won't go as deep. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm really doing about a quarter round. However deep this goes, that's about how far I'm bringing this in. And it really gives that illusion of it being a little bit deeper and rounded. Okay, so it really is a, a quarter round right there. Trying to get all the way down to the background so that that's actually getting rid of the, um, the tool marks. And I don't wanna go in that direction because it's just slightly going against the grain and then it's going along the end grain, but I'm gonna have to probably use maybe a curved gouge and just do a straight down cut. Um, first of all, I'm probably gonna be blocking the, the camera coming kind of back. And I really don't like to do that kind of cut towards myself. So if you ever have to do that, basically stand back like this and then come in that direction or rotate it and um, carve it in this direction. A little bit better, <laughs> better of a decision, I'd say. So now come in this direction. And because it, certainly it's a much more controlled cut and I can see it a little bit better. And it's just by carving away from me, it's a much safer cut too. Okay, so now also what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go a little bit down here um, and make a little bit of a waist. Just a slight, slight dip right there. 
so it gives a little bit of shape there. And um, But the difficulty also, if you do that, is you're basically creating an area kind of where you have to climb out of a hole. All right, so there might be a point when you have to, if it just sort of catches right at that bottom, right, right at that area, then you want to take a number 314 and just go across the grain and clean up that. Just a very slight, just slicing across the grain. Okay, so right here, when I talk about working with the horn and the hand and the, uh, the sleeve, so this is the highest, then the hand, and then the horn is the furthest back. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my number three, six, and very gently just take the horn and lower that down. Okay, so this is the furthest back. All right, and then this is the, it's also furthest back here. So you wanna make it look like it connects underneath the hand. And I know I'm gonna take this deeper than this even. But remember that the horn actually is going to come out at the end of the horn. So be very gent gentle in this and just go, kind of take a little bit at a time. All right, and as I go, I just wanna do a little bit of definition, but um, again, remember, if you push too hard with that vertical cut like that, that stop cut, then it's very easy for that to break. See, I can see it just flexing a little bit. I'm hoping that double-sided tape is gonna hold. Because it's not only it's not only fragile just because it's a tiny little area. It's fragile because the grain is going like this and it tends to split along the grain. If it's gonna split anywhere, it's gonna split along the grain like that. Now see what I'm doing? I'm doing kind of a slicing cut and it actually creates a little bit more of a gentle cut rather than just pushing through by doing that kind of a twist. Okay, so I'm taking this down to just about about an eighth of an inch um, left. So that is probably the fussiest area. And now I'm gonna come in and just take and round this. So come like that and just take off that corner. Now the thing is this is a, this pretty hard wood. So as I said, if we wanted to do basswood, it would be a little bit easier to get the tool through the wood. Now that's one side. Now I'll come on this side and around over that. And do you see how, ooh, that sounded like it was actually cracking. I better not do that. That was it was a little too much leverage when I was hooking there. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-angle that cut like that so that the pressure is not off the edge of it. Yeah, 
that was just a little too, too fragile. <laughs> And you know what? If it breaks off, just glue it back on. It's not the first time it's been done. Okay, and then come in the side. So I'm just taking off the corner so it looks like it's rounded, but it's really just a half round. Okay, now I just want to show you what's going on with that. Okay, so just around it there and then it comes up. So if you look at it from the side, you can kind of see it splays up like that. So it looks like a horn. And um, from, the, from the top, though, is really what we're looking for. And of course, the little remaining tape holds on to all that. I'm just going to get a little toothbrush and scrub that away. That might clear most of it away. <sighs> okay, yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and work on a little hand. And that is also going to be just a little bit below that sleeve. And then just rounded. So you can, you can get very detailed with this or just leave it as a sort of mittened hand. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. Just really trying to get rid of any of those saw marks. <sighs> okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and use this and just out uh, around this over this outer edge of the sleeve. Just using this number three six because it's a tiny little area. Right there, and then this also is going to be rounded there. And then the shoulder and all of that is going to be curved and rounded. Okay, and now there's a hair hairline there, basically, where the, the hair is going to be kind of flowing there. And the face is going to be a little bit lower, so I'm just going to go take my bee chisel and just outline that. And then take the face and just lower it down a little bit. The neck is going to be lower there. 
And so this is not a really, really defined face. Again, just depends on how much detail you want to do on it. Okay, I'm not going to do much more than that. I can do a little bit of the lowering of the neck. So if the um, if the three six doesn't quite fit into some of these areas, using the number seven six, some of these more curved areas. Okay, and then I'm going to take this number three, six again and just around over the hair. You can kind of break this up a bit so it's not real smooth, All right? So you can have it look a little bit more like hair. Again, just trying to get rid of those saw marks. You can go all the way to the back and even do a little bit of an undercut right there if you want. Just a little bit so you don't see any of that vertical wall. Okay. All right, it's not looking real clean right there. Just going to take that number seven, six and a little bit more. <laughs> you have to be careful. The face is getting small. <gasps> Oops. Let's see. Let's just define that a little bit more right there. Okay, let me just show you what's happening here. Let's get rid of all the little bits. <sighs> okay, so from a side view, it's looking a little bit more, <laughs> a little better than from that view, from, from the face view. It's looking better than the side view. All right, now I'm going to work on the wings. Okay, now again, you can decide how much detail you want to do on this, but I'm just going to soften the outside edge just with a flat chisel. And then there's going to be this area where the grain change it changes. So come back in that direction. And it's really just taking that outer edge and softening it. And then starting right there and going in that direction. And then same thing here. This is just a softening of that. Not 
fully rounded, but just a, a softening of the edge. Okay, I was just dividing off the hair and that with that cut. Okay, now I think what I'm going to do is do a little bit of a hollow right there. I'm going to leave this edge high though. Just a little bit of a hollow. Just to give it some shape. But I'll leave all of the edges the same height. And if you start struggling with grain direction, you may have to make cross grain cuts like this. And the only difficulty with that is there's a tendency to get more tool marks from that. So I'm just trying to approach this from all directions. Okay, now you could just leave it like that, have a little bit of a scooping, or I'm just gonna do a couple V cuts, very, very faint, letting it fade off right there. All right, and not really doing much with this at all. Just very lightly, like that, and just let it fade off. Okay, that's pretty much all I think I'm gonna do. Ah, see, I always wanna do more and more detail. I have to hold back. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna work on the lower edge of the skirt. Okay, so now with this one, all I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna get a very curved one. I'm gonna use a number nine, five. And you wanna make sure that these cuts, this is just very gradual, right there starting and then going a lot deeper as it reaches the edge. Same thing here, just this is more of a sweeping one. Now this one, notice I started from the outer edge in that direction because um, as you're going across the grain a little bit more as you're ending it, it's there's more of a tendency for that to split. All right, and then just gonna fade that. All right, just take those corners off and blend that into that rest of the area. All right, so go in this direction on this side and this direction here and this direction here. Now just be careful when you do that because it's very, very easy for the corner of that tool to a snag. Now this is a number 314, so I quite often kind of interchange between the 314 and the flat chisel. So I could have done all of this with a flat chisel. All right, you couldn't do the that hol hollowing. All right, you gotta do the hollowing with the curved gouge, but that corner, knocking off the corners. I could have done that with a flat chisel also. But just be careful because it's very easy for the corner of this to really go in there and kind of mess up the inside corner. Okay, so now there's just um, some areas along like the outer edge of the wing where I just want to do some undercutting again so I don't see that outer um, outer vertical wall. And that's really more just final cleanup. Tell you what, let me turn it around so you can see it. The difficulty is I'm sort of going over the edge of it and it's a little difficult to, to see. So kind of going over the edge, basically starting there and then 
just kind of walking along, slight angle down. Now we're getting to a curved area, so I'm going to need to go with this number 314, or possibly even more curved, maybe a number 514, if it just is too, if it's not curved enough. I think it seems to work though. Okay, like that. And then you can come in here and do the same thing on the underside of the wing. Again, it just thins it out a little bit, gives it a little lighter feel. And then also, I'm going to take along the edge here and do that undercutting. So this is the number nine, just to get into those little tight areas. And then the number seven, six. Okay, so then as it opens up a little bit, we can use the number 314. Now I'm going right pretty much across the grain with this, so it takes a lot of effort to actually get through that wood. Okay, now I need to be a little careful there. Right there. Okay, and that's I think that's pretty good. All right, let's just see what's going on here. All right, I think I'm going to stop there. Now I'm going to take this off the uh, backer board. Now there's a couple ways I can do this, and that's either taking a flat chisel and just very gently kind of lifting it, but there's some very fragile areas. Oh, yeah, I don't know. That, that might have already broke. Oh, I hope not. Oh, yep. All right, time for some glue. Um, see, it's not the end of the world. All right, now you can either do this. Ooh, that didn't sound good. <laughs> you can either do this, or if you start hearing that, you take a, a solvent that you soak, you put on a brush and you soak around the outside. You just brush along the outside, it soaks into the tape, and then it very gently releases. Now for the uh, double-sided golf grip tape, I use uh, um, lacquer thinner. And so um, uh, that was a little, a little scary. And yeah, I think that might have a little tip right there. Yep. All right, so that's when you take <laughs> you take a little dot of either super glue or regular glue, and there you go. Oh, oh well. <laughs> take a little dollop of um, glue, and there you go. <laughs> so and here, let's just stick that on there like that. So now if you wanted to just to lightly sand across the surface, there's not a lot of real fine details in this. So sanding wouldn't really eliminate any of that. Um, I guess what I really recommend with sanding is don't rely on the sanding. If you rely on sanding um, for, for that final finish, um, it kind of causes you to hold back on getting some really nice carving cuts. So, you know, get as clean as you possibly can with the carving tools. And then if you have to, even if you just want to um, maybe blend this with the, um, the surface that was sort of that plain surface, you can do it like that. Um, and so you can do a lot of things with this. You can paint it if you want. Um, this is mahogany, so it would be, <laughs> be sad to paint mahogany. Um, you can maybe um, do some gold leaf if you've ever done that. Maybe you can even take some gold paint and, um, and um, work on it that way. Uh, you can color um, 
anyway, you can do a lot of things like that. Now I wanted to show you what I actually designed this float for. Now this is a picture frame and this is just something I got from a, a local craft supply store called Michael's. Uh, they've got a bunch of different sizes, but what's kind of neat about this is you can basically take this, glue it on there, maybe do two of them. Um, you can position it however you want. And um, it just, it's just kind of a neat, um, I don't know, a neat de decoration if you wanted to make your own um, picture frame. Uh, you could just have this as a something that was sitting on your mantle. Um, you could do a lot with it. So anyway, I will be back really quickly and I, after I glue this on and we'll actually show you what it looks like complete. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, so now um, I glued this back on just a little regular wood glue. You could use super glue too. One thing you want to be careful if you use super glue on little repairs like that, it tends to uh, affect the finish. So if you're going to be putting a finish on it, it's going to kind of be iffy whether it's going to kind of show up really <laughs> boldly. Uh, so I use regular wood glue. It's not as, well, it's not as quick. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to touch the horn. <laughs> um, and so if I very gently sand, and I just used 400 grit sandpaper. I like to use this Merca Abernet. Uh, it doesn't leave grit, so you do want to be careful if you're sanding and you use the regular sandpaper that leaves grit on it. If you ever decide to carve on it afterwards, uh, it is potentially going to dull your chisels, so you do want to be careful with that. And so just along, maybe roll it up into the inside areas like that, along the outer edges. And actually this is 400 and it's very, very worn 400. So it's probably more like a 600 right now. But uh, I don't want to get anything that's so aggressive that it's going to leave scratch marks because there's just those areas that you kind of have to go across the grain to get into certain areas. Um, and if you use like 50 grit, it'll just leave horrible scratch marks. All right, so I'm not going to even touch that little guy there, but I did want to real quickly um, put some, uh, just put some oil on it. And this is just some simple butcher block oil. Um, I like to use it a lot because, um, you know, uh, <laughs> I have a grandbaby. <laughs> He's a, <clears throat> just over a year and a half and he likes to put everything in his mouth. So um, using something that you actually put on butcher blocks, put on edible surfaces, bowls, that type of thing. So um, I did want to mention another thing. Since this is potentially going to be put on um, this picture frame, if you go like that and if you make sure that the very fragile part is actually glued against the surface of the frame, it saves it. <laughs> okay. And it kind of, you know, it can stick out the edge like that and cover and you can have two of them mirror image of it um, on either side. That would be kind of pretty. But all I'm going to do with this one is put an oil on it and let's just see what happens. And just a little cloth and One thing I like about the oil is it just doesn't matter <laughs> how much you put on. You can you can always wipe it off. You can just you know get really really carried away, and it just really gives it a nice shine. And with the mahogany, it's really very very nice because it brings out the grain and the mahogany. I'll probably have to put a get a brush to get into the inside areas. But just to get an idea of what's going on and how it's going to look very gently. Ooh. Okay, so put a couple coats of the oil on it and yeah, I'll, I'll work on that a bit more. But anyway, that's, uh, that's something you can do uh, to just really, really bring the, the color of the, um, of the grain out and the color of the wood. 
Okay, so, and I'll just, I'll buff it a little bit. It's kind of messy right now. Oh, see, I'm gonna break that porn right off all over again. Okay, all right, yeah, I'm happy with the way that that looks. All right, well, um, so as I said, you can put this up on, you know, on a, glue it up on a mirror frame. You could hang it on a tree. You could make it a Christmas ornament. I'd be really, really careful with that. And you know, I did think about something else. You could actually get one of those little plastic or metal horns, little tiny ones, and you could actually put that in there instead of wood. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> that would be kind of neat. And then you have this gold horn and just, you know, make a little, a little hollow behind the hand and then just glue it in. So it looks like, uh, anyway, find one the right size. Or you can get one really long too. And then you don't have to worry about the fragile nature of it. <laughs> so anyway, well, thank you for watching that. I hope you enjoyed it and Merry Christmas and happy carving.